Cheers! <laughs> Welcome, Welcome to, to the movie, movie bitches. bitches! Oh, it's this a... Martinis are tough to cheers with. Oh, fuck. Damn it. This is gonna be a, a thrilling, thrilling episode of Movie Bitches. Bite your nails. Um, a real nail? Yeah, a real well, nail Well, so bite. we didn't quite think this through. Basically, <laughs> these past episodes of Feud have led us to really want a martini. <laughs> Martinis are not great for holding while you talk and gesticulate a lot. Yeah, we'll see how this So we'll see out. how this see. goes. It this might be a disaster. Be. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, welcome to Movie Bitches. Episode 4 of Feud. So this episode for me was a mess. <laughs> it's just becoming clearer and clearer that the 2017 narrative is being shoved into this plot line. My first question, right out of the gate, where the fuck is Elvira? What the literal fuck? I kept being like, she's gonna show up, right? Well, they're almost done filming, so maybe she'll show up. What? She didn't show up at all. At all. So mad. You're so right. Yeah. What the actual fuck? Uh-huh. Yeah. So, wait a second. Particularly. Because there's no other person of color in this <laughs> fucking show? I mean, yeah. Particularly since the actress, Maddie Norman, um, plays Joan Davis's woe. Plays, I am so drunk, plays Joan Crawford's maid in Torch Song. A different Joan wait, Crawford. Wait, 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 wait. So the maid, Elvira. Yes. Comes back later. Yes. To play. No, before. Oh, earlier. Before. She has already been in a movie with Joan Crawford. And Joan is like, nah, nah, nah. I want her to be the maid. I mean, I don't who know. Who saves me but doesn't get to save me because she gets brutally murdered. I don't, I don't know Baby if Jane. that is how that happened. Watch Baby Jane. I don't know if that's how that went down, but I mean, I can only infer. Yeah, well, because we didn't get I mean, to see it in the movie. Knew each in the other. show. This is a show. Oh my god, we're so drunk. We're so fucking drunk, you guys. Martinis. <laughs> Martinis are dangerous. That's nonsense. Because she she's, was my favorite part of the she's movie. She's the third lead in the movie. She really she is. She has more of a role than Victor Buono, I would say. Absolutely. Or at least an Well, because also. Also, mind you, the whole time you're just sitting there being like, "Where's Elvira? Yeah. Where's Elvira?" That movie. is the the theme yeah. of all of this is hashtag Where the fuck is Elvira? Yeah. Yes. Anyway, this episode was just so overwrought. It was very much overwrought. More well, than read, any other episode, I think. I read the description and it was like Pauline really test gender boundaries. Who's Pauline? Oh, right. So this is my point. I literally read the description. I was like, who's Pauline? Oh, like, I was like, oh, okay. So you left out Elvira, but you gave Pauline her own episode. Right, right. Which, I mean, uh, I couldn't be uh, so mad at the Pauline storyline, except that it didn't exist and they made it up. They did. The black slipper doesn't exist. I want it to. She'd play a choreographer falsely accused of shoving a principal dancer off a catwalk. Then she's proven innocent and whisked from her cell to dance the dead girl's role on stage. Well, the whole big plot of this episode is that she has written a script right. called The Black Slipper, which sounds fabulous. It does sound fabulous. And I was like, I literally went to IMDb and was like, can't wait to, oh, this doesn't exist. Turns out Pauline has no uh, directing or writing credits. She's been an actress in a couple things, but like this whole she wanted to be a director narrative, is, there's no proof that that happened. Yes. Well, I'm watching the show going, okay, well, that's a, a narrative that you invented, but is the other stuff? What's real? What's what real? What I don't know anymore. I don't know anymore with this show. I don't know what's real. But, so that's what's just a weird campy fantasy, which is apparently not what they were trying to do. But it's also not that, fan not that campy. Mm. Not at all. So it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> I guess... Well, okay. I will say this. They're trying it with, with what's-her-face. Um, 
Colleen? No, what's the act? What's the assistant's name? Colleen. Colleen. Great. They're trying it with her, where they're like, "Oh, she wants to direct. Oh, she wants to write." And then obviously, what's going to happen is that nothing's going to come of it. Sure. So they're going to be like, "Oh, she tried so hard, but nothing happened." And maybe that happened. Maybe it didn't. I get the sense that they are never going to mention Pauline again. Maybe this is like her episode. If you're going to give me like history, give me some history. Right. Not yeah. just like Pauline narrative that didn't happen. Don't give me fake history. Give me real history. So I do want to talk about something that has been bothering me in every episode. So Alfred Molina yes. and his wife yeah. have, their only scenes are in their bedroom and they have the most disgusting headboard. It's literally <laughs> cow skin. And I just think, how are you gonna clean that? That's disgusting. That's Who surprising. has a cow skin headboard? headboard? It was Wait, disgusting. Can we think about that for a That's second? That's why I brought it up. I did love that they totally had a shout out to Kiss Me Deadly, which I think is Robert Aldrich's like best movie. It's this really good film noir, and I was like, yes, Kiss Me Deadly. That's all I had to say. What about was that. the shout out? At the preview for Kiss Me Deadly, the canisters got switched and the atomic bomb went off in the second act. Well, they was... were like, we mentioned it. Cool. And I was like, yeah! yeah! And then I was like, oh, that's what this show does. Right. I'm just like, sort of lays things around and mentions them. I mean, we'll see about next week, but so far, I'm back to hating this show. <gasps> well, it's a different show again! I just don't understand. Pick who you are and also be something good. Next week is the Oscars. There are three reasons why I deserve this award. Oh my god. So I'm I'm here for the shenanigans that are gonna go on. Well, because we but see, I don't know. I don't know if I trust them. I don't know if oh, I trust it's them. It's gonna be fake. Some of it is gonna be fake. Like they're gonna they're gonna like have a camera backstage on Betty Davis being like, that bitch! Even though there's no evidence that that happened. Don't make shit up! You are not, who are you? Who are you, Ryan Murphy, to be putting words into Betty Davis's mouth, into Joan Cro That's, that is some gall. The show is having an identity crisis. It absolutely doesn't know what it is, but no. week to week it's different tones and themes. Yeah. Um, and the fact that they seemingly willy nilly -ly or, or, or deciding, well, we'll make this up, but this will be very true to life, and this will be fake, but it's like... That's what I'm saying! It's like, some of it is so detail specific, and some of it's just like, oh, well, we're just gonna pretend like this oh, happened. Oh, we'll give a whole episode to Pauline! I did sort of love the scene at William Morris where Joan Crawford was like, well, then fuck y'all! Yes! I don't see the point in having an agent, or a room full of fucking agents. You're all fired! Well, and I did like the comparison that, like, Joan has ten, you know, and, and Betty, Betty Davis, Davis has the junior assistant one, you know, person. Or Betty Davis, the woman who's nominated for an Oscar for that movie that they're currently working on, and who also is a better actress. Although, at that moment in the timeline, she had yet to be nominated. Because she doesn't get nominated until the end of that episode. Remember all the phones are ringing? That really weird scene where she's like, uh, doesn't wake her up and all the phones are off the hook? But then that seemed, the that sounded right, though. That seemed, to me, that seemed like very legit. Oh, it didn't seem false, but I was just like, hang up those phones. Like, when Joan wakes up, she's like, oh, it's off the hook. Well, I'll leave it off the hook. No, she didn't. She hung up a couple of them. She left one off the hook, and I, the hook. it bothered me. It bothered me. Yeah. So, what was spot on to the T painstakingly recreated was Betty Davis singing whatever did happen to Baby Jane on the Andy Williams show. Oh my god, right. That's, that's true. <laughs> it was very like, remember that Kristen Wiig character? The secret word is... The secret word is branch. All right, look at me, this one's easy. Branch. <laughs> They'd be like, oh, you said the secret word again. Do you remember that? No. Like the cape? You don't remember that? You didn't ever see this? I she to, did I, a lot of SNL. I have to see this. It's great. Betty Davis did place that ad 
to be like, I'm out of work, but it was before whatever happened to Baby Jane. So she plays that before whatever happened to Baby Jane? Which just makes more sense. Wouldn't it have been great if the very first shot of the entire series is the newspaper flying onto the street and it's Betty Davis's ad? Out of work, I'm an actress, da 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 da. Like, yes. And that just starts the whole thing. And then you're like, Ooh. You're like, what the fuck? Betty Davis, this Oscar winning. Two time. Yeah. Actress has an ad semi jestingly in the newspaper. Semi. But like, wouldn't that have been such a good opening? Yes. Hire that hoe. Come on. <laughs> so we need to talk about Frank Sinatra. <laughs> Who, when we first meet him, looks like a cancer patient. Remember the golf course? He's like real. Who also, the entire time we meet him, never looks like Frank Sinatra. Well, so this is the thing. Toby Huss is the actor who okay. is doing him. Okay. He can sound like, oh, he sings like, it's mm. kind of his thing. He's so like, quote unquote, famous in the biz for doing this Frank Sinatra impression that he like. Got this role. He doesn't look like him, but he sounds like him. Like his voice or whatever. That doesn't help me. It doesn't really, but he did have the best line in the entire episode when he's like... Nothing but tits and fist fights and me looking like a real cool daddy. Come okay, on! Okay. I died. Me looking like a real cool daddy. <laughs> so, he was a big fat diva. Which is true. Of course! But you, that happened. Yeah. And yeah. that movie was swiftly forgotten and it is considered to be terrible. I'm sure. Yes. So... Although I do love Guys and Dolls. Well, she, well sure. <laughs> Is that the first Frank Sinatra movie you thought of? Yeah. Uh, what's the first thing to Frank Sinatra movie you think of? Um, I guess From Here to Eternity, because he got the Oscar. Shh, he got an it's, Oscar? Mm, supporting. Wow. I um, do like From Here to Eternity, but yeah. like... It's not a Frank Sinatra movie. Yeah. So, yeah. I guess yeah. I think of Anchors Away. Well, sure. Yeah, I guess that's true. I like On the Town. Um, Pal Joey? I Oh, Pal Joey. Pal Joey's good. Um, isn't he in, like, not Philadelphia Story. What's the musical version of Philadelphia Story? High Society. Yes, High Society. Which I love. Yeah. Love me some fucking Philadelphia story. Love me some high society. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Although Cary Grant is far more appealing to me than Bing Crosby. Yes. Now Although it's still Bing Crosby to Frank Sinatra. I'm, I'm... You're for Bing? Yeah. Really? Yeah. I mean, I think historically they were both fucking assholes. So, you know, I don't know what I would choose. Go hang out with Louis Armstrong. <laughs> there, that's the real choice. <laughs> So yeah, this episode was, I don't know, like silly? It was bad. This, uh, the tone, real, it's real jarring from episode to episode. From four episodes in and there's literally yet to be a consistent tone. Four different shows. So I'm kind of here for the ride of it all. Sure. I'm just like, okay. At this point, why not? Yeah. Um, but I have a lot of problems. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. <laughs> but you know what? There's some, there's some martinis. And hats. Yes. Cool daddies. Wait, was Hedda Hedwig in this? It's not her name. That's not. I think I combined. Hedwig and the Angry Inch. Maybe. And Hedda Hopper. Hedda Hopper. That's her name. Anyway, cheers to Hedda Hopper's hat. Sure. And just fabulous cunts. <laughs> sure. Sure. <laughs>